Hello and welcome to a series of videos that looks how to make sounds on the Korg MicroKorg, a virtual analog synthesizer that's very affordable, uh, a lot of people have, but maybe uh, people might not be as familiar as they could with how to edit and how to make new sounds on it. Um, I have the Korg manual in front of me, so hopefully I'll be able to give you factual information along the way as we create a sound from scratch. So let's get started. First up, we are going to take up um, a sound here, and we're just going to initialize it, uh, which means that it resets it to a really basic patch. The way that you would like that you want to do that is by hitting shift 3 once you've selected the patch so let me do that again so here you have um, so patch A15 you can see that on the screen hit shift and 3 and then hit 3 and the patch is initialized okay as you can see it's a very basic saw wave all right moving on um, the way that you edit the sound is very simple. You have these two selectors that allow you to zero in on a, a editing section. And then within that editing section that you select by turning these, you have these uh, five knobs that allow you to edit different parameters. Uh, you'll see some labels in white and then some labels in green, both for the um, the editing sections and then for the parameters themselves. The, the ones in white are the ones that we're interested in. They have to do with the synthesizer engine. The ones in green have to do with the vocoder engine. The vocoder, of course, is the effect that allows you to feed a sound into uh, the synthesizer. It could be vocals, it could be a guitar, it could be any sort of sound. Um, and then process it in a way that makes it often it's used to make it make things sound more robotic but in this series of videos I'm going to focus on using the synthesizer so it's the, the white labels that we're looking at okay so let's get started first up voice um, here you choose between vocoder voice or synthesizer voice we want to keep that on synthesizer voice okay uh, next up, uh, single or layer. Um, the microcorg allows you to have uh, sounds with two layers. Let me explain what that means. So if I hit, uh, turn the knob to select layer on here, uh, there are two layers, which means that each layer has a whole set of editing parameters from oscillators to filters to envelopes on layer one, and then uh, an identical set on layer 2 and you can mix between the two layers um, at the expense of polyphony. For now though we're going to um, go with a single layer though. Okay, next up uh, monophonic, polyphonic, unison. Monophonic you can only play one note at a time so play one note but then, whenever I, pl I hit another key, it switches to that key automatically. Polyphonic allows me to play chords. Unison is a way of thickening the sound, so it's kind of, think of it as an ultra-fat monophonic sound. It basically creates extra detuned voices. So even on that basic patch, you can notice the difference. And it's uh, because you're creating extra voices, I mean, it's creating extra detuned voices, it means that it's only monophonic. Alright, uh, that's that. Um, let's see. And then this one is the trigger mode, which I believe is to do with. Um, actually, I'm not sure what that is. I think it's to do with the layers, whether how you trigger the layers. 
but I'll find out more about that. Okay. And then uh, the last one is um, oh the unison detune. So you know that effect. The there we go. The unison. So really, it kind of takes the tuning of the different voices and then spreads it out um, to create a more detuned sound. Sometimes that's desirable. Okay, uh, let's move on. Um, the pitch section, um, we have transpose. So that's by semitone, okay, and then um, this is a, a fine tune, um, so that's uh, more the temperament of the instrument, uh, it helps you stay in tune with other instruments such as acoustic instruments, okay. Um, next option, uh, oh, portamento, oh, by the way, to reset, you know, for example, I had the knob, um, here from the last uh, page of um, of parameters, and so since this parameter was initially at zero, what I have to do is I have to go back to it, meet it, and then I can, you know, edit it. Okay, I'll show you that in a minute. So unison, um, sorry, not unison, portamento. Um, this is a sound with no portamento. Now let's add some portamento. A little bit too much portamento, but here we go. So it kind of allows you to glide through between the notes. Alright, there we go. Alright, that's a very shrill sound. So um, let's go to the oscillator section. This is oscillator one. Um, first knob allows us to select the waves. Saw wave is the one that we have currently selected. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to check one thing, uh, which is I'm going to jump to the mixer section, and the mixer section, if we refer to here, you have the volume or the level of oscillator 1 and the level of oscillator 2. So that one is turned all the way up, okay, and let's see, see oh, so this is what I was talking about, um, the way that the values are represented. Right now it's flashing because the knob position is not matching the value that is recorded here. I have to go and meet it. Now I've met it. We're at zero. Now I can turn it up. All right. Anyways, uh, so oscillator two is turned up, turned off. That's how I want it. Oscillator one is turned up all the way. The oscillators, of course, are the things that actually generate the sound. Okay. So waveforms. Saw wave. Square wave. Uh, which is more rounded. Tell you what, let me turn off the unison because that's kind of giving us a crazy sound. So let's turn it to part five. There we go. So let's start again. Saw wave. There we go. Somewhat buzzy. Square wave. Kind of more rounded. Uh, uh, triangle wave. Uh, much more dark. Uh, darker sounding, much more softer sounding. Almost uh, a little bit of like an organ kind of sound. The sine wave. At a high volume it sounds a lot like a flute or a recorder. Kind of. Okay. Um, th this, uh, this is the now I need to find out what this is. This is the vocal wave. Um, while I've used the microcorg for a long time, there's some features which I have not used a lot. So let me um, find out what that is for you. As you can see, I'm extremely well prepared for this presentation. All right. Um, so here we are. Uh, this is the Vox wave, according to the uh, manual. It simulates a waveform that is similar to a human vocal cord, okay? I don't know about that, but we'll come to that in a second. Um, okay, these ones I can tell you about. These are single cycle digital waveforms, which are taken from some early 
digital Korg synthesizers. And um, so let's just play. Sounds very much like an organ. Now we can sweep through these waves with the third knob. This one doesn't do anything, but this one does. So. I believe there's a 64. And they have uh, different characteristics and you can uh, sweep through them and decide which one you want. So there we go. Almost accordion-like there. Okay, um, so notice how I uh, do that to reset back to where I want to be. Um, okay, we said the digital waves, oh, noise. Um, which, oh, which is very low sounding, I wonder why. Maybe it's because it's not turned up. Anyways, oh, and I think, yeah. All right, this is a good point, uh, this is a good part to go back to the beginning. So, if we go to the saw waves, um, back here, we've mainly dealt with this knob, which allows us to select the wave. Okay, these two knobs, control one, control two, as they're labeled here, oscillator one, wave, control one, control two. All right, so, they have different functions for each wave type. Um, let's see. For the saw wave, the control one uh, adjusts, uh, modifies the waveform. Let's see what that sounds like. So this is a, uh, without it, and then you dial it in, dial it in. And the, at the maximum setting, it actually adds um, it adds another sawtooth wave, um, or it, it, it creates an overtone, which is an octave higher, and you can hear that. Okay, and then you have various tonal variations in between. Control 2 allows you to, just checking the time here, uh, allows you to um, apply modulation, which means apply change to um, Control 1. So let's see what happens there. So let's put that here, let's say, and let's put that here. It's a very slow sweep. You can kind of hear it uh, affecting uh, control one at a very slow rate. All right, let's move on. Um, I'm going to change to the square wave. So uh, here for the square wave, control one. Um, adjusts the pulse, the pulse width. So, basic square wave, um, and here's when I change the pulse width. So, at the maximum value, the pulse width is changed to the point that it just cancels out the wave. The pulse width, if you think of a square wave, the pulse width is the, the, the width of um, part of the square wave and then as you change it, it changes the, the tone of the square wave. And then I believe that the control two applies modulation to, so it applies a change, a cyclical change to pulse width, to the pulse width. Therefore, this is called pulse width modulation. All right, let me show you that. Let's put in some pulse width modulation. Oh wow, there's a lot of pulse width modulation. Let's turn that down a bit. So you can hear that sweeping through. 
Okay, moving swiftly on, that's the square wave, triangle wave. Um, let's see what happens with the triangle wave. So as you can see I'm turning the settings back down for control 1 and control 2. For the triangle wave, um, again, it uh, changes, uh, modifies the, wave, the waveform by adjusting its value and um, again at the maximum setting uh, it will add uh, a pitch or a, uh, an overtone, I guess, that is one octave and a fifth higher, according to the manual. Let's see what that sounds like. brightens up the sound, I don't know if you noticed that. So, and then control 2, I believe, again, applies uh, cyclical modulation to control 1. That's pretty extreme. It's really going from a low setting to a high setting. Alright, uh, let's move on. So we were at triangle wave, sine wave. Um, it, it, according to the manual, it adjusts the depth of cross modulation. Okay, so let's see what that sounds like. I actually don't know what it means, um, so we'll see what it sounds like. Basic sine wave. Wow, that's quite a drastic change. Let's put it there. Let's add some uh, modulation. See how that affects it. That is quite drastic indeed. Quite nice to add some movement to the sound. Okay, I think I'm going to stop here today. Uh, and then, next video, I'm going to continue uh, showing you the rest of the uh, options for Oscillator 1. Thanks for watching.